everybody, it's Gail from Gail's Bookish Things. I have a little unboxing to share with you just for fun. It's not a huge one, as you can see, and a few other goodies and things going on in my corner of the journal world. So let's take a look at this Vanessa order. Crinkling, will be loud. Okay, here we go. Out of the way. So the first thing is I wanted to try this Deatramentis Scented um, Nutmeg Brown Ink. Fall isn't too far around the corner and I thought this might be a fun addition to journaling colors for the fall. Let's take a quick little snifferoo and see what it's like. I don't honestly smell too much, but it'll be fun. I uh, will do a little test of the color here in a minute. And then um, this just looked like too much fun. Let me find my scissors. I ordered um, a bottle of Noodler's ink that is invisible. And it's only seen with black light. So why you might ask well because i have three grandkids that are seven eleven and twelve and a half and i am indoctrinating them into the fountain pen way of life with the best of intentions um, they have learned how to refill their pens now which is super exciting so i thought having an invisible ink that's only visible with a black light would be a super fun thing for us to do together. I could send them little notes in the mail. They can open them and read them with their black light. So it says here, fluorescent black light recommended. Um, the only light specific invisible fountain pen ink. Oh, and let's see, it says it's called Blue Ghost. So that just sounds super fun. The only bulletproof invisible ink. Very interesting. So, oh, and isn't it cool? Oh, how neat. Look at that. That's awesome. You can see um, the directions on how to fill the pen through the bottle because it's transparent. I love that. And I really appreciate that you get such a large filling of ink with noodlers. So this will be enough for me to, you know, take a, a little bottle out and I'll pass on the rest to them. You know, at that age, like I was as well, all the little secret things and spy stuff seems super fun. I've decided recently upon watching a few other videos, I'm gonna just play around a little bit with using a flex nib. I was watching Carrie at Pens and Tea and she had one that was a triple tail Flex, and I thought I'm just gonna um, try that as a maybe less expensive version. I do like the clear demonstrator style. It, one of the things that first attracted me to fountain pens and I didn't want to spend a whole lot. So I decided to just get something that would be a really fun, um, easy, not too expensive way to play around with um, the flex nib. I'm having some good luck with my um, Kakimori nib that my friend Donna so generously gave to me and I'm getting some line variation with that. The other day I just sat down, got out a couple different inks and really focused my efforts on getting the hang of this and that's been going, going pretty well. I'm enjoying that um, but this would be something where I can just have it in my pen case, maybe filled with a neutral ink of some sort and just use that for maybe adding some bold printing, bold accents to my everyday journaling. This is a cute little box again with the illustrations, whale of a catfish and a whale of a pen. So we'll, we'll give that a whirl. I know. Let's try these together. I'll be back in a moment for that, but I wanted to show you a few more things. I was shopping in one of my favorite places locally to shop, which is Historic Main Street in St. Charles, Missouri. Now it's like a 
experience to go down there. Lots of places to eat, shop. Um, there's some regular type businesses too, but also just like the uh, little boutiques and so forth. So this shop sadly was going out of business, but they had these little charms and I thought they were pretty cute. And I loved this bird. I think it's a swallow. And ever since I was in Italy and actually saw swallows flying in the evening, I just have been kind of fascinated with them. Kind of notice them now. And then this one just reminds me of some of the Baumkuchen little token charms you can get. It's much smaller, quite thin, very um, less of a statement, but I still liked the look of the coin with the little square cut out. And I will show you, whoops, paper sticking to me, um, just a few recent journal decorations. Let me get to where I don't have writing. This one's kind of funny. I will tell the story of this. So I'm giving all my secrets to the whole entire world to know, but sometimes, not always, but sometimes behind pages like this, there's a little bit of a rant going on on paper. I get it out of my system and then I'm like, I really don't want that to be something that's there. So <laughs> my kids will never watch this, but you know, you know my secrets. So that's hidden there, but it is kind of a meaningful picture. You may have seen it before I added all the others. These were here originally. This is where my daughter goes to college, College of the Ozarks. And this is a neat picture of Edwards Mill where they still grind flowers and so forth. And you can buy mixes. A little close up there. I have several elements that were gifted to me on this page. This is one that I bought, but these others are from Donna at South Shore Paper. And I've been kind of doing this lately where I'll put a little bit of minimal collaging or elements to the page and then add some lighter highlight marker or something just to, um, I guess just sort of finish the look of the page. And I put that around the edges. This is my, from my friend Sherry at Wholeheartedly for the Lord. These are gifts from Donna. And I really liked how these sort of, I guess I'd call it like a sage green or a soft green from the strawberry stickers and her vintage dress and then the little tea kettle kind of work together. And then here's a little bit of uh, kind of an assortment, some stickers I've received from, um, I think that was from Bob Kuhin also, um, gifted coffee stickers, homemade washi from Donna. This is just from my husband's recent business trip. And Hana was so kind to send me these vintage stamps from her collection, which I love. Here's some Donna. The enchanted door that you want to go through. And geez, I liked how the purples worked together. And I did a pinkish purple edge. This has no hidden words behind it. It's just an amazing picture from our botanical garden magazine of the Chihuly, um at night display. And here, a uh, gifted sticker, one I made, one I bought, and this is just from an Italian soda. That's it, that's all that's there. So I will be back shortly when I have the Flex Nib inked up. Okay, I have my paper ready. I got the pen out. So you screw this all the way down, we'll dip it in the ink. And then if you can see this, it will suck up the ink that way. This feels nice and smooth. And if I didn't mention specifically, this is the Conrad Flex and it's the clear demonstrator. And I think we'll try this ink. I just was kind of interested in the color. I have a nice fill here. You can see the ink coming down go to the end and then it does have this little cap it secures on the end there just your basic pen but I do think 
trying, the flex will be fun. Okay, there are just a few things I played around with. It was really fun to do the cursive here with some of these months of the year. There's a lot of bounce to the flex nib and it just pours out the ink very nicely on the down strokes. This ink is ending up to be, um, in my way of describing it, sort of a reddish brown or yeah, a red leaning brown is a good way of putting it. I'm not sure that it's coming through here as accurately as it could. Um, it makes me think of kind of a deep rust color. And then here, much more brown. On the narrower strokes where the shading is, it's more like this. But the other dries pretty darkly. I think it will be a um, fun addition in my ink collection to have this shade of brown for the fall. That's all I have for now. I hope that was interesting to you. Take care and we'll see you again soon.